thank you to everyone that watched uh, the clip yesterday uh, and commented and dropped some likes and even shared the, the video. Clearly, people want to win t-shirts and stuff, so nice one. Um, we're, we're back today, uh, and I think a big focus of this video is going to be the dropping zone and analysing why me and Nathan thought that the, the yellow card was produced in the first place. And Martin, I'm sure you're going to tell us why we were incredibly wrong. Um, so... Um, we, we've got the clip lined up and ready to go. So let's get back to it. All right, mate. Well, listen, don't press play yet, Nath. Well, remember we, we talked yesterday about clues and, and and everything else. We got those little shadings of the field of play there, which is always a clue to say, does that look like it's 9.15? It looks a bit close. Does it look close? I'd probably move them back about another metre. So really, if you put them on the, on the border of the two shaded bits of grass it'd probably look like it's a bit further away wouldn't it yeah and because it is a bit further away and it would look like it's about nine because it's easy to reference that that's not point not you know 9.15 away because a lot of people will say oh well i know that those grasses are cooked because of five meters i know so he's nowhere near it and you get some people thrown i'm sure people's going to comment on stuff like that on, on on the link but before we move on everything was there was sort of tidy Remember we talked yesterday about viewing the handball on the wall? Yep. He's actually got a view of that, hasn't it? If it happens. If it happens I, from where he is and he struck that ball at the wall, I know it probably isn't going to happen because the way the other players are set up is a clue. But at this point here, he's got a view of whether it's going to hit the wall and there's a handball and they're going to run down the other end and scores. However, as the player steps back from the wall and goes to deliver the ball... Adam starts to move, but he then doesn't have a view on the wall if it was handball. Just there's something to discuss. And as the ball walks in, as the ball drops in, there's a challenge. What you two think is a yellow card. Does Adam run fast enough to get closer? Does he go? No, he's line? strolling in, just well, casual. If we're just comparing that there, you can see Look that where just, he is now. just as number 11 starts to strike this ball. He's moved considerably too far. If he's watching for the wall, he's gone right past it. So we can we can pretty effectively at this point rule out that that was ever his intention, because otherwise yeah. he'd have kept himself in a position to do it. Yeah. And again, with his body facing the goal line, he can't track the flight of the ball. So say there was uh, a change of plan or they're, they're doing something tricky, he's going to have to wait for it to come into his peripheral. Now he's turned his head. You're, it, it's a lot more difficult to quickly turn and and change your direction of movement of motion from that position if you suddenly need to turn around and leg it up the other end of the pitch, yeah, rather right. than from a side arm. Nath. So we've just stopped it straight away. We've seen the player go down. We've had a look at the initial contact. I'm going to pull it back one frame well two frames and I because what I what, what I where I had it was before I mentioned this already um I think that um, well I mentioned this on the previous uh, sort of talk through that we had number two number six uh, the sort of the two closest there number six as well yellow so but none of those three players have identified there are obscuring the view of the coming together between, I believe it's number eight and the other yellow player whose number I, I can't identify. And that means that he's got a, and, and obviously he's in it. We can see the arms are out. We can see that the elbow is bent on the, on the claret and blue player's left arm. Um, so we can see that basically he's, he's being caught on the chin, the, the yellow player there with the arm, um, upper height, um, and and that's that's really my assessment of that particular. Is it? And of course, we slag off Gary Lineker and those people on Match of the Day who do this every bleeding Saturday night and free frames it. And go, oh, I can see him <laughs> sitting in front of my clock in South Shields, wherever you are, frame by frame. And that's an elbow. South Shields. I don't know where you are. Listen, you're both <laughs> Birmingham. That's the north. And then, uh, but here, Adam is 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 coming in, half beat up. He's not going to see all that like you've just seen it, is he? No. No, I know, but what I'm giving him credit for is the position that he's in. Yeah, but has he got a good view? I, I think he has. I think he has. I think he's got an okay view. 
If we're talking about the Goldie Locks down. Um, no. Goldie Locks down. I'm he... flash up here. Goldie Locks down. <laughs> Boom. Um, the the view he has is okay. It could. It's not bad, but it could be better. It could be a lot better. Would it be fair to say that this is probably one of those things where to get a really good view of that, of that contact with the arm and the head, you'd have to be almost by the by the D, wouldn't you? Yeah. To get an angle on it, or by the corner of the, of the penalty area. And then if you are by the corner of the penalty area, you're too far away from the next phase of play. I know we're not all mind readers, but it's all about probabilities, isn't it? Yeah. I don't think any assessor, let, let them pull us up on it, would think that that was another but a good position. Can I, can I challenge you, Martin? Yeah. Well, because the thing is, you, the thing is, I'm, I'm listening to what you said previously, where you, you're telling me that um, basically the position that he's in is a good one because he needs to be, it needs to be more. The, 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 basically, the point of the position is all about making sure, not about how close or far away you are, but that you don't have anything to obscure you. So I think that that was what the basis. I mean, that's something that I've. Right, you're wrongly. I've always sort of felt is is the crucial thing when I'm out refereeing myself. Is I need to make sure that there's nothing in my way here, irrespective of whether I'm right on top of something or whether I'm, you know, trying to get towards it at, at, at a quick rate. So I think that the question I would ask you is: obviously, you've said it's a good position. Is that a, is that? Do you think he's following that general rule and he's done it well? Mm, I would say I I think it's one of when you go out probabilities, unless you want them to be right over the other side, I, it, I just think it's one of those things. I like other people to have some input on this. But for me, maybe a little bit closer. He could have gone a bit earlier on his run, but then he sacrificed the handball. You've probably sat there and been in mind this is his first year as a level three. You know, he wouldn't have that little worldly wise, you know, psyche to think, ah, it's definitely not going to hit his hand on the ball. Mm. He is definitely going to float it because I know how he's presented himself to the ball, left footed delivery, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So, from my point of view, I don't think we could do much more about this positioning. See, I'd, I'd say would, if that was his starting position when the ball was struck, would be good, because you can quickly expedite wider, narrower. For example, where where the ball drops, those two players are isolated, and that's why he's got such a good view of the incident from there. But what if it had dropped in maybe closer to the penalty spot? He's now kind of further away and also looking through a crowd of people whereas yeah, he, would have, he would have had nine and six from Claret and Blue and, and 11 and two that yeah. would have been in front if the incident for example had been with the number 10 Claret and Blue so it's fair to say he's not in a bad position is he with, you know. if it was a starting position no he's not in a bad position where he is now there are better mm-hmm. positions but I think where he is now where it's freeze framed is a good starting position for when the ball is, is played in initially Okay, right. Most of our readers are grassroots referees who have got club linos. This exact scenario as a club with a club linos, referee on your Todd, on the Acne Marshes, the Bristol Downs, up in Scotland on their own somewhere. You're not going to start where he did, are you? Definitely not. So where are you going? You probably would start and have a, a far better view with that challenge. From where you would start with club liners, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Where the, I would say Martin probably where the blue gate is. Because you're looking on that gate. <laughs> because you're looking to sweep round, aren't you? In it, you're looking to initially detect offside if you're on your own. Yeah. And you're then looking to sweep round as it comes in. So you you so you've 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 done your job to make sure that everybody's on side when the ball's played. You're then coming round to detect foul play in the penalty area. But when you go back to when the ball's delivered, you take back the position of the, of the players, take it back, Nate, to where yeah, yeah, okay. the ball's delivered. Do you want me to go back to the start, dear? Just go back just to, to where the ball's coming in because let's go back a bit more and then and you just play it again. You'll see. Where you said in line in line with that gate, that's where you would have have to be, wouldn't you? Yeah. yeah. With club assistant linos, which yeah. you would have then picked up that alleged offence. Yeah. And then nothing else probably would have happened, would, would it? So no. this is probably one of those occasions where 
being in a team of three doesn't really help that <laughs> particular offence, does it? Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't, does it? Then you look at from a club club Lionel's point of view, this this is a dead clip. He picks yeah. up that foul, he probably does what he's got to do, and off we go again. Yeah. So I just wanted to make that important analogy about the difference of positions from club assistant referees to neutral assistant assistant referees, which does change things significantly, doesn't it? And again, Absolutely. when we talk, Nate, didn't you say that up your way? Up your way, Nate. I'm sorry I'm quiet. I'm not, which is very rare someone says that about me. Is um you don't you don't have club assistant referees up your way. No, I believe that Durham's one of only two counties where the club assistant won't take any responsibility for an offside and will only do ins and outs. Liverpool's exactly the same. And well, so and che- Cheshire was Cheshire was when I was over there. So we're club linos up your way. You don't do offsides. No. You just do ball out of play. Yeah, which is why I'm saying so so, so I might be speaking out of turn there. If if in another county uh, the the club assistant is taking responsibility for offsides, then potentially might not be stood in the same position as I'm saying I would be if I was doing a game in, in Durham. Yeah, this is very much geographically because when I was in Wales, when I was in East Riding, uh, they are both places that the club linesman uh, takes on the full role of a of a, an assistant referee, including offsides. Um, in some cases, uh, depending on like academy games and whatever, they'll also flag for fouls and stuff. Um, but it, yeah, Cheshire, Merseyside, uh, they your your assistant, your club lino is literally just holding a flag anywhere along that touchline. You're lucky if they're paying attention most of the time. Yeah, I did. I did when you two mentioned it. I was a bit like, oh god, yeah, I remember that. And a couple of years ago, I'm, I think we walked into the FA after um, Ryan Anson flagged it up. We talked about it on our page, and Ryan emailed uh, Neil Barry for us. And I think Neil Barry just said, "Well, you do what you want." So it does seem strange that we have got this inconsistencies of how we use club assistant referees. Yeah, there is a big difference between some counties. Round here in Somerset, the club rhinos do offsides. Some even do free kicks, believe it or not. When I first started out, I used to always put the club lino on his own forward, not his own back four, which caused chaos. <laughs> yeah, no, but it was I, a mile on side. Yeah, slotted in, it's fine. Because what happened was, what, what happened was, I got told to change it, but I said I wouldn't and never. It really helped me because they're so conditioned to putting a flag up for the other person when every other referee does it. In my games, he goes to put it up, realizes it's their own bleeding player that's offside, <laughs> take it down again. So I, I found it really, really useful, but you decide what you do with club lineups. So I just think that's an interesting thing that's come out of this about the difference between county FAs and yeah. nationwide. You got to know, it's probably a discussion for another day. Yeah. But back to the clip. So we've we we decided put- about. Well, I was going to say, we, we've we've paused it right on the moment when the attacker has fouled the defender. And I th- I think unanimous, unanimously, myself and Nathan agree that it's a foul. Unanimously. Uh, so we una- count the votes. Stop the counts. Ra- Stop yeah. <laughs> Topical. Bravo, Martin. That's, that's, that's really good. <laughs> I've seen a lot of hashtags about that, so we must be blowing up on Twitter. We must be. Must be. <laughs> But um, we we assume that the yellow card was was for the foul, right? Um, be- because maybe the refs looked at it, decided that that foul warranted only a yellow card. I think there's a case here that the attacker could be should be sent off. He's thrown a clear elbow into that defender's face. Uh, it even was when he, well, even when he's on the floor, Adams there. Adam's body language doesn't change. There's no urgency in Adam's body language. So we yeah. obviously are seeing something else, hasn't he? Or yeah. not seeing anything at all. Mm. So from an observer's point of view, I'm sure they look at the change of body language and stuff like that from, from players as well as as well as match officials. So but if that is the case, they, then obviously we, we talk about him going over to the assistant referee as well. Yeah. For for advice on this, which is the two furthest oh, players whoa, 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 whoa. away. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I'm getting ahead. Well, how do you know he went over to talk to his lino 
about advice on that? Well, this is the assumption that has been made based on the clip because uh, of the, the player that gets cautioned is the one that fouls the defender. So has he gone... Uh, again, because the yellow card isn't produced immediately, but it is eventually, you would put two and two together and get a, a very well-educated four in, in terms of it's an informed guess because all of the all of the pieces line up. So when you say it's it's not a caution for that foul, and I'm like, well, that's clearly gone unpunished, but he brings him back to, to caution, and I can't imagine what the caution is for if it's not that. All right. Nath, I'm going to press play again. And then when the ball comes across and is in the back of the net, stop it. Now, how did that ball end up in the back of that net? It was headed in the net. Did he? Did he? Did he? No, you tell me. You, you, you know. Well, yeah, because the thing is, it looks there against seven and all the players jump on seven. But now I understand where you're going with this. Oh, do you now? I do, yeah. Actually, I don't, because... <laughs> I'll tell you why I don't, because I'm now thinking about what happens at the end of it, yeah. and if that's right, he's cautioned the wrong player. Yeah. This is why it's called the Goldilocks song. <laughs> Trying to find out, you've got to tell me what the score well, is. What I'm saying is... I'm, I'm now considering the potential of a deliberate handball into the goal, which will be a cautionable offence. But he, he, if he's done that, he's cautioned the wrong player. Unless I'm very much mistaken as to which, which player he cautioned late, later on in the clip. He cautions the player with the... Hold on. No, take, who scored the goal? Go, go back. Who scored the goal? Ten, wasn't it? There's 10s there. Ten's there with the big blue uh, sock no. ribbon yeah. thing. Counting everything, aren't we? He's definitely there. Hey, hey, see, this is where coloured tape round socks are really help because you're being <laughs> Yeah, I remember those sock tapes. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah, I've seen that now. Oh, uh, what have you seen now, masterminds? More sock tape. <laughs> <laughs> It is, yeah. Here you are, rewinding it. At the time, here's this referee, first year level three. Yep. All this is happening. He's flying through the system because he was a damn good referee. He still is. He just does the injured blessing. But well, hang on, Martin. Let's not talk about let's not talk about it's Adam, isn't it? Let's not talk about Adam. Okay. Let's talk about Kev. The assistant. Kev Delino. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's quite clear, okay. That the information that Kev gives him is 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 crucial in terms of his decision making process. Is Kev stood the there with the flag up? Two minutes. Well, I can't obviously be certain of that because the camera angle is only one way. Well, this is but what I'm, I'm saying. Thinking. That that would be another clue. If Kev stood, if everyone's celebrating and Kev stood there with this uh, this this flag represents a vital piece of information to this oh, puzzle. I'm, right now, I'm thinking because I know Martin quite well now as well, I'm thinking that it's more likely than not, if it's one of Martin's referees, that he'll be using buzzers. So, so, yes, thank you. So, what I'm saying is that I think that um, the initial, if, 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 I'm, if I may wind it back, the initial, if we now keep our eyes on Adam here, you can see that he's moving towards the direction of the assistant. Okay? Now, I think he, I'm thinking now that he's done that because he's had a buzz. He's had a buzz from him. He then comes back over to the situation that we see him in now, and I think that that's a completely different situation because he's, at, because he's, he's either looked at the assistant and the assistant said, you're going to have to go over there because that's a, a problem, or he's either come back to him and he said... You know that, that this is a situation that 
I've got so many players around me. They're all shouting about the team. I'm going to have to go over. But it's in his mind. The, the, the seed is planted in his mind. Before I do anything here, I'm going to have to speak to Kev, my assistant. Now, is that good? Yes. Yeah. It is good, isn't it? it is good teamwork. It is good teamwork. Now, when you go back to, to the ball in the back of the net, go back to the ball in the back of the net, and then I want you to watch players. Don't watch the ball in the back of the net. Watch players' responses immediately after the goal scores. So go back. Just go back to just before the ball's in the back of the net. Not that far, right? Play from there. Play from there. What's the yellow players? Peel into the ref yeah. and then turn and appeal into the line. Hey, look, two's running to the line now. These three on the yeah. edge of the box in the yeah. five are running to the line now. So yeah. what are you thinking now? Handball. And to be honest, I, I was I was I was thinking handball as soon as you said the last bit that you've said. But now you've said, look at the players, and the players made this gesture here. I'm now 100 percent certain on it. Mm. Now, yesterday when we talked about this bog, you were all, both of you were going for that challenge with yeah. the lads on the floor. So a whole lot's changed, hasn't it? Yeah. So the refs looked at that challenge and gone, yeah, that's all right. Or, which is always, always really good practice, don't guess. Because he hasn't got a clear view. Even though he's in a good position, he hasn't got a clear view of that challenge. And mm. from where we are, that does look like an elbow, isn't it? And yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember getting pulled up by a PGM, um, PGMOL assessor when I was doing this in a room, I can't remember even where it was. And he and I, because I said, you know what, as a coach, I, w- I would have loved him just to blown for that one, give him a card, bin him, and start again. Yeah. Oh, well, you're guessing, you're guessing. I said, well, look, what I'm telling you is, that is an expectation, isn't it? Yeah. That's an expectation of a lot of people, is that he's going yeah. on. You throw into the dynamics that that's a red card to the home team player. It might be a little bit harder to sell, mightn't it? Yeah. Do you see what well, I mean? Well, this is, this is why you, wrongly, we, watched, about we watched the clip and our expectation of the clip was goals disallowed because the attackers fouled the defender. Yeah. yeah. That, that well, was our think, expectation. Well, when you think in a red? When you think in a red? No. I still do. Yesterday? Okay. Okay, well, I, I was never thinking of red. Because because when I watched the yeah, first look. time I watched that Martin without any without any replays I watched it through fully the first time I thought immediately as soon as the the, the, the player had gone down I thought why hasn't he blown the next pause thing it. I'm thinking pause it. it pause it okay right pause it that's not pause is it right <laughs> at this level of football now interesting this is a couple of, a couple of years this clip was. The linos don't warm up down there now, do they? The linos warm up the opposite end, don't they? Away from the assistant referee. Do you know that? Are you aware of that? There's a directive brought out. The, the assistant referee. The, they were doing this. What was that? It's clearly what's happened here. That a manager's gone, you go and get down here, finds out what's going on. Well, this is all right. So the sub goes down there. He's not really warming up, is he? He's there to listen to what they're saying, trying to throw his supplements worth in, trying to have influence on it. The FA looked at this and said, right, let's get them the other ends. Yeah. So at that level of football, they don't warm up behind the line anymore. They warm the other ends away from the line now. Yeah. One of the reasons they do it, because lots of that used to happen. You know how I many times you see something score? They go, go down there, you three. And then up yeah, goes the yeah. other one. I'm going to send us three down there and they're arguing about the decision, three subs in one team, three subs in another. It's just a nice little positive development, I think, of what yeah. the FA brought in. But I got to say, Martin, that was one of the, the, the plus points that I gave when I was talking to Ant, and I think we mentioned it on the previous edition as well. I think the way uh, Adam handles that substitute. Great, right, isn't it? Really, it. really good. Really good. This is, we want to talk in a positive. What yeah. is quite funny about this little bit if we play it on in a second, is that if you look at Kev, Kev's totally focused on the field of play, hasn't looked over the shoulder, hasn't took his eye off the ball, which is exactly what you want to do as a lino in that position. Let the ref tell you what's going on behind him. You focus. As soon as you take your eye off the ball, you're going to, particularly in that sort of high tempo environment, 
you're going to get some shenanigans going on, aren't you? But watch what Kev does in, in a second. Says he's a player. It's dead, dead funny. If you look at Kev's hands that he hasn't got the flag in, mm. watch what he does. Let's play. Okay. Shoot. Yeah. Shoot. As if like that has any impact on what was going on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatsoever. And Kev, Kev is the top, top lad. I know Kev firstly, he's the top, top lad. And then we talk about you're blowing him and he, he blows and points to the centre circle. Right. Can I say what I was saying in the previous edition, Martin? What? I think he should stop about here. Yeah. Maybe a touch further, maybe there. Where there's nobody. If we look at the full picture here, all I can see is the referee. There's nobody else in this frame. And that, for me, is where it should be taking place. Trilateral, he's already reached yeah. his pockets, so he knows what he's going to do. He's made his decision. He's got all the information from Kev. It's fresh in his mind. He's clear about his procedure. and he's Well, is he clear about his procedure? We'll talk about that. But he's clear about the action that he's going to take. Why can't he do it there is my question. So what you said earlier, did it, or yesterday rather, about, I might have said it earlier as well, where you want to isolate him. Yeah. You, you, and, and a really good non-confidential, confrontational way that when you're dealing with scenarios like this is, it's blow your whistle and go, come here. Yeah. Uh, some of them, you remember that Ibrahimovic did it? No, yeah. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got every right to do that. That's a dodgy second course if you're going to do that, aren't you? I'm going to call some you again for not coming here. So yeah. you're right to find a neutral a yeah. neutral area for, for to do your management. Yeah. Now, here's a question for you. Would you want him to put him inside the field of play so he's going to go away from the camera or would you want him to point nearer this side of the field of play to do that management? No, I, I, said. I, yeah, I'm going to say, you, you don't want to book him right in front of the dugouts. So again, central kind of area, if you, if you draw a line between the two goals, uh, pull him up there, nice neutral part of the pitch, loads and loads of space around. Player, meet me halfway. And then it's, you've got, well, you, you've got your pantomime to perform then with, uh, we, you can even, we, we've seen the top referees do it all the time. Just a point over there. I've, I've seen this, you handballed. And because of that, you're getting a yellow card. Uh, and then, and then here it is just for everybody uh, to see why, why you've been booked, where the offence happened, and then the confirmation of the booking. I, I'm now, I am happy to call heart. I think I think that's that's I think that's spot on, and you would do it in such a way where, as you're doing the caution, you have Adam there, player here, and benches behind us. Yeah. He doesn't do the other way round. He doesn't do benches behind him, player there, caution to the other side when no one's there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you see yeah. him? So the Goldilocks zone bit would be round the other side. So you've got Adam, you've got the player, you've got the benches. More importantly, he's assessing and understands. He's nice and happy because you're seeing every clear, and then you deal with it and go again. Yeah. That's happy with that. So listen, we've talked about all that again, and there's still loads we haven't talked about, isn't he? We haven't even got to the end of his shows his cards. We haven't really got back to where the goalkeeper throws the ball. Uh, is that a card? Is that intentional? Is that one seriously pissed off goalkeeper who wants to take the piss out of referee? What could we do to the referee? And so in tomorrow's episode, we'll talk about those other forms of management that are in this clip. And as we go through lockdown, we get to a stage where we've played a whole clip of all what we've talked about, where all our shenanigans that's gone on, and we'll, we'll look at this back as a really reflective, hopefully rewarding learning experience. And and we could probably do the whole clip with um, with uh, the ref coming on and, and kind of giving his POV. And then um, I assume that you said there was an assessor in there watching him at the end. And then what, what the assessor said of this incident as well. We go down that yeah, Adam, Adam's good lad. I'm, I'm sure you'll come on. We're all in lockdown, are we? I'm sure you'll have time. Really top, top lad. Come on, Adam. Really, really shame. Big loss to us as a referee. And, uh, and yeah, he'll come on and we'll... You know, so be careful what comments you say because he'll have a right go back at you. I think of all the refs I've ever watched, Adam was the most handsome. <laughs> I'll tell you what, is this a bit like, is there any time you could do a bit of like tumbleweed go across the screen there? Because, like? <laughs> you know, I've, I've looked down the, the assessments and the observers. It does say appearance. You can't just put in there and Good looking, good looking fella. If he's coming on and we've uh, we've said some things that, you know, you know we've criticised him, I at least want him to think, I well, his anthem. at least I'm not an ugly bastard as well. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. Every cloud. Adam... 
used to be really, really fat. And I know you had your challenges in the past. Indeed. And I'll say fat because that's what he called them. And I know you had your challenges in the past, Anthony. I was a fat fuck as well. But, but you, I don't, never, never said that, I just said you were fat. No, I, I, I'll <laughs> say that myself. You, you took on an amazing 55-day challenge or something, wasn't it? Yeah. What it was called? Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. Always really admired, I, admired you for that. He's got what you did. He's got a photograph of him who looks like he's been for lipo suction and he put it on blow instead of suck. <laughs> he is huge. And then he used to use that as inspiration for how he, how he was now. Yeah. Incredible, incredible dedication to a fitness regime and, and diet program. Yeah. But that's something we can talk about to Adam throughout yeah, lockdown. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so. That would be awesome. I think, Ken, you know, one of Ant's uh, fans on social media told him about his enjoyment of pizza. So we all know <laughs> <it>. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, did. let's wrap up that session for today. And then tomorrow, we'll follow the comments. We follow anything that's on there. And we'll, um, we'll see where we go from here. So thank you for listening to this one. And uh, we'll be back soon. Goldilocks down! <laughs>